were everywhere. It was something that, you know, it has changed my life forever. I'm just a poor shepherd. My name's Jedediah. Me and my sons, we've raised our sheep on the hills outside of Bethlehem for many, many generations. Well, one cold night, we were sitting around the fire just trying to keep warm. It was crystal clear. There were beautiful stars everywhere. And of course, as you know, being a shepherd, life can be pretty boring, pretty lonely, just being out there all by ourselves. Sometimes we just don't even have anything to talk about, so we just kind of just sit around and watch the fire. Well, all of a sudden, a bright light from heaven shone down, and we just fell to our faces to the ground. We thought it was the end of the world. It was just out of nowhere. And, and, and then I heard a voice that said, do not be afraid. Well, I was afraid. My sons were afraid. We didn't know what was happening. Right out of nowhere, this bright light. And, and I, I looked, and there I saw him, an angel. An angel from heaven, an angel of the Lord had come to us. And he said, I have good news of great joy for all people. Tonight in the city of David, a Savior has been born who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Well, we, we looked at each other and thought to ourselves, that doesn't seem right. It, if this is the announcement of the Messiah that we've been waiting all these hundreds and hundreds of years for, why would he be born in a, in a manger? And the town of Bethlehem, that's the city of David. You mean it was just right below us? Right below us where we've been taking care of our sheep all these years, the, the Christ has actually come? Could, could this really be real or, or were we just imagining all of this? Well, our imagination became a reality real fast when all of a sudden all around us angels just filled the sky along with that great big angel that told us not to be afraid. And the angels were singing glory, glory. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And I've got to tell you here tonight, it was heavenly. It's like no other sound I've ever heard. I've heard some good singing here tonight, but it was nothing like those angels come from the throne of God. It, like I said, it's changed my life forever. To hear the announcement that the Christ, the Messiah, has finally come to us. And he's revealed himself to all people, good news of great joy to all people. Well, as those angels kept singing, glory to God in the highest, peace to men on whom his favor rests. I thought to myself, could it really be that God was bringing peace to us during this time of hardship with the Romans doing all their terrible things and Caesar telling everybody to go to their hometown and be taxed and all the oppression? Could the Christ really come to help us out and give us hope? Oh, how desperately we need hope. Well, just like that, the angels were gone. They just disappeared. And we looked around, Jacob and, and, and Joseph and, and, and I, me and my two sons, we looked around like, where, where did they go? And, and then Jacob, the littlest guy, he said, what are we going to do, Papa? Now let me ask you here tonight, what would you do if the angel came to you and told you that the Christ was born in the city of David, a savior for the world? Well, we didn't have to think too long. I said, Jacob, Joseph, come on, we're going to go to Bethlehem, to the city of David. We're going to find this baby that's in a manger. And we ran down the hill. We didn't care about those sheep anymore. They could take care of themselves. We had more important things to take care of. Well, when we got to Bethlehem, it was, well, it was a lot of people. A lot of people not knowing where to go because there was no room for people to stay. And, 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 and they were angry because they didn't want to pay tax to Caesar, but they had to obey him. And, and there was all this frustration and, and we were asking, where is, where's the baby? Where's the baby? And nobody knew where the baby was. 
And then little Joseph, he said, well, Papa, remember the angel said the baby would be in a manger. And uh, I thought to myself, how could I have missed that? Mangers are where the cattle feed. They're in the stable. They wouldn't be in the town. They would be outside in, in a cave, in, in a shed, someplace where the livestock are kept. So we started heading out of town real fast. We were ready to get out of that mess and that crowd of people. And as we got out of town, all of a sudden a bright star appeared that we had never seen before. It was brighter than a than hundred stars. And we've seen a lot of bright stars. And, and this star just shone its light right down on a special place. It was a cave in the hillside there outside of Bethlehem. Well, as we started approaching the opening to that stable, that cave used to keep the animals in, you'll never guess what we heard. A baby cry. Oh, it was just the sweetest sound I've ever heard in my whole life. And, and as we got close, we said, hello, it, can we come in? And we heard a man's voice say, certainly. Well, as we came in, there was a man and a woman, and you guessed it, there was the baby right in the manger in cloths wrapped up. The most beautiful baby I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of babies in my time. Well, we told the father and the mother what the angel had revealed to us, and, and then how the message was given of good news that a Savior was born who is Christ the Lord, and, and, and it would, the salvation would be for all people, all people. Can you imagine that? God would come for all people, and it's real. Well, I was so touched in my heart. I, I, I just couldn't say any more words, so I just knelt down there by that little manger with the little baby, and the man said his name is Jesus. Jesus, which means the Lord is salvation. Glory to God in the highest. God's salvation has been made known. Well, I said, boys, gather around me and, and let's pray. Let's just thank God for his revelation to us. What we've been waiting for for hundreds of years now is a reality. And we prayed, and then we looked up, and we looked at the man and the woman, and we, I just said from my heart, glory to God in the highest. And they nodded their head and said, yes, glory to God in the highest. They looked so tired, and yet they looked so peaceful. We had brought a little food along, just kind of for ourselves, not knowing if we would need it, but we said, here, here's some food. Evidently, you've had a long journey, and you need some rest. We're going to leave now, but may God's peace be upon you. Well, when we left that little cave with the man and the woman and the baby, we could hear that baby crying as we went up, up, the, up the hill to where our sheep were. But we were jumping for joy. It, it was an excitement that I really can't explain to you. It's something that was deep in our heart to know that God's love had come to earth through God's Son, Emmanuel. Like the prophet said, God with us. Well, that was 33 years ago. But like I say, the memory will never, ever leave me. But just recently, some things have happened here in Judea, in this land of Israel that have really bothered me. Jesus the Christ, who grew up to be a man, who, who, who led people to know about the kingdom of God? I recently heard that he died on a cross outside of Jerusalem, that he was crucified by the Romans, and I, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How can that be? But then I remembered what my father taught me. My father taught me what the prophet Isaiah had foretold, that the Christ would come as a suffering servant, that he would be shamed and ridiculed. He would even be bruised for our sins and crushed for our iniquities. In fact, he would have to die so that he could redeem people from their sins. I remember so well my father telling me that over and over again. And now I see that that's what happened with Jesus. 
He had to die. That was God's plan. The good news is, the word is out. He's not in the grave. He's alive. He's appeared to many, many people. Now, I haven't seen him personally, but there are witnesses all around Jerusalem that have seen Jesus Christ alive. He's risen. Well, that's all I need to hear. That's all I need to, to know to have my faith alive in God. And, and since I've heard that testimony from people that have seen Jesus alive, I've put my faith in Jesus. I believe he is the true Christ, the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. My life will never be the same. And the most wonderful thing is I know that someday when I die, I'll be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ, with his angels, and with all who believe on him. Now, before I leave and go back to my sheep tonight, I just need to ask each and every one of you, have you believed the witness of those who have seen Jesus Christ alive after he died and was buried and then rose again? Have you believed their witness as I believed their witness and in my heart said that's real and it's real for me and no one can take that away from me? I'm going to trust in God. Do you have faith in God? Do you know that he came to pay for your sins and that he arose so that you might have everlasting life? I'd like to just pray tonight before I go back to my sheep. I just want to speak a blessing from God. Let's pray. Oh, Father, almighty God, how I thank you here tonight for the witness that you gave to me and my sons when we saw the Christ child born in the city of David, when we beheld him with our own eyes and we worshiped him as we knelt down in prayer, thank you for bringing hope to me and my family. And now after all these years and all that I've heard and, and all that's happened to, to Jesus, even his death, which caused me such disappointment, but then the testimony, the witness that he's alive, which has given me such great joy and hope. Oh, Father, God Almighty, I thank you for your great revelation of love. Thank you that you've put faith in my heart to believe and that I have everlasting life. Now, Father, there are those who are here tonight that may not have believed on Jesus. And Father, I just pray that you will touch their hearts with your love, that they may know their sins are forgiven if they put their faith in Jesus. The Lord is salvation. And may they have true joy, true peace, and may the love of God fill their life each and every day. Father, I pray this to your glory and to your honor through Jesus Christ, my Savior. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.